Hello, welcome to the second episode of the Distro Spinner. So if you haven't seen the first episode, there'll be a link up there that you can click and go and watch that one now. So I've used it for not quite a week. I had to uninstall it yesterday because of a problem I had with another Linux distribution installing on a different laptop. Didn't work, so I had to go to this one. So we've used it for six days though as the only distribution on this laptop. And it's actually been quite a fun experience, to be honest. Um, aside from just, you know, being based on Ubuntu and just everything being, you know, transferable from that. This Voyager box app is actually really quite handy. So I didn't go into too much depth about it in the first video, but after spending a bit more time with it, I actually can, I really do think it's a good little idea. So I showed this in the first video, like, you know, switching between the dark modes and how easy that is. But there's also, you can do to automatic or you can change the hours of what automatic is. And it will just go in there, but we'll click cancel anyway. And then you can also just stop automatic altogether, which I actually think is really quite handy. So let's go back into dark mode and then click OK. Dark mode. We're already on dark mode. Silly boy. OK, so and then there's net speed, which will also enable or disable the net speed GNOME extension up the top, which is quite handy. Um, so clicking OK will pop a little extension here, which will then show you sort of network speed and sort of if you're downloading or uploading. And then clicking it again will disable it. Quite handy. And then Walls Voyager. Um, so this is got this is the newer version of GNOME where you can change the background just by going in here and adding a picture. But then you don't get all of their own custom ones here either. So as an easy way for sort of new users and stuff, you can just go to Walls Voyager and click OK. And then it'll open up all of the Voyager specific wallpapers in sort of an image viewer. And then you can just click one and then right click on it and set it as the wallpaper. So there is one I quite like. So this one I think is quite cool. And then we can just set it as the wallpaper like that, which is you know quite easy and it's probably easier for a new user that's not too used to Linux. So I don't mind that idea. Um, extensions GNOME, so if you click OK, it will again open up another menu of sort of recent downloads popularity and then installed, installed extensions and that will open that up on the GNOME extensions website. I'll just show you quickly how that works. Obviously it's not going to be as quick as you'd expect because it's on a live USB. There we go, so it'll open up the GNOME extensions website and it should open it to the installed tab. There we go, so that all works nicely as well. Let's close those tabs and let's get back to the Box Voyager application and then let's go to Cancel and then go back. So that was extensions GNOME and then Conky Control is also quite cool, so it'll give you a little GUI here that will open it up where you can just sort of do some Conky management there you know, set the lists and management and menu and auto start, etc. So that's quite cool to have it nice and easy there. Let's click that little X. Um, reparation, I didn't really do this, um, but it like purges cash and things. So let's do a little one of it now. So let's purge, let's purge cash of home. Um, so I'm, and then it'll just give you a little thing there. And then yeah, fairly easy, that's that done. So again, it's quite easy for a new user there. Um, con control um, system info. I'm not too sure if this one's that necessary. It's just a neo fetch window. I'm not sure if that's faster than just going. I don't know. But again, it, uh, the box Voyager app. I think it's a really cool application. I think the more work that gets done on it, it can be like a sort of a central hub to just control this distribution if you like. And I think that's what separates it from you know other Ubuntu based Linux distributions. But Apart from that, it's been fun. I haven't had to change too much apart from the email client. I don't tend to use Thunderbird, which is its de default email client. I use Evolution. So that's the only thing I had to uninstall and reinstall. And then obviously packages like Telegram and stuff that I use on a daily basis that is not installed, I installed. But other than that, it's been a fun, you know, six, seven days. And I would actually recommend that to a new user. So we're going to stop this recording and then we're going to go and spin the wheel and see what we've got for this week. OK, let's spin the wheel. Um, obviously I've taken Voyager off and I've replaced it with OS 108 or whatever it's called. What do we have? Salient OS. Okay, Okay. so we've now booted off the USB. I've not actually used Salient before, so I've just done a bit of reading and I've sort of found out it's quite a gaming-centric distribution. So what I'm going to do is install it onto the laptop, but also the desktop as well, because it wouldn't really be fair to review it without, you know, reviewing it for what it's actually intended for. So we're going to run through the installer which is Calamara's by the looks of it. And we're gonna go for British English. Next, next. Okay, that's the right region. So we're gonna go next. All right, let's quickly test our keyboard like always. Perfect, I'm gonna go next. 
Okay, we're going to do a straight erase disk and we're going to go for swap with hibernate. Perfect. So that will give us a 17 gig swap, 220 gig root, and then a 300 sort of boot partition there for your boot files. So let's go to next. User account details. Um, this is a laptop, so let me just make sure I know it is. Tyler Lappy. Type in our passwords. And then we're going to go for login automatically. And then we're going to go next. All right, let's review our options. Keyboard is set to English UK. Yep, that all looks good to me. So we're going to click install. The Salient OS installer is about to make changes to your disk. You will not be able to undo these changes. So we're going to install that now. And then when we come back, we'll be booting off disk. All right, we are all installed. Um, I really like the clean aesthetic it's got there. So this is an XFCE desktop environment. I'm not sure if this is a plank at the bottom or a panel. I think that's just a panel. Let me just, hang on, let me enable tap to click one second. Let's go into the mouse and touchpad settings, go into touchpad here and then enable tap to click. And now let's see what, yeah, so that's just a little panel there. So these are quick launches. So I guess if you open one, and then it'll ah oh, nice ah oh, nice terminal as well so this is based on Arch Linux it's got 1405 packages XFC is your desktop environment the theme is Quagga Dark package manager there's found some updates okay cool um, let's have a little look around then so we've got some quick launch icons down at the bottom here and then we have a top panel up here with your leave buttons your clock your Bluetooth and your audio and then here you get a nice little drop down whisker menu I think that might be it's really clean looking I like this already okay so we got some updates somewhere didn't we so let's go to this little icon here and then go into the package manager and then let's grab them updates and then we'll have a look around while it's doing that um, I'll enable the AUR repository at some point as well when it's finished that Okay, so let's start how we always do and see what it comes installed with. So we'll go for accessories here. So Compton is your compositor, Clipman, clip, uh, clipboard, uh, copy and paste, uh, CPU power GUI, disks, I think that's GNOME disks, archive manager, light DM, notes, screenshot, sensor view, software token, software token small, Sue Studio, image writer, task manager, text editor, Funa, and wine tricks out of the box. Very nice. In development you have Meld and Sublime Text. In games it has Lutris and Steam out of the box as well. Very nice. In graphics you have Blender, Color Picker, Dark Table, Document Scanner, Document Viewer, GIMP, Inkscape and Nomax. Okay. And in internet you have your SSH server browser and VNC server browser. You have Chromium as a web browser. Discord. Very nice to see that there. FileZilla, Firefox, Steam again, Telegram. Very nice. Transmission is your torrents. Audacity, Xfalso, Guck, C View, Handbrake, Caden Live, Perfect, MPV Media Player, OBS Studio, they're spoiling me. Olive, I think that's another video editor there. Pulse Audio, Simple Screen Recorder, and just um, Test Utility and Video Capture Utility. Do you know what? I'm already really liking this. Um, I'm just going to see if it's got HDOP installed out of the box. There's no shortcut for the terminal though so we will add a shortcut for that it has htop out of the box we're using one gig 1.3 gig at the moment let's go into our keyboard shortcuts and then just make a no we want do we want this one what terminal are we using xfce4 terminal or something let's just make sure we've got the right one xfce terminal let's try and add that xfce terminal is that the right one control alt t no. Um, it's probably XFCE4, isn't it? My bad. Let's just chuck a 4 there. That should do the one. Control Alt T. Use XFC4 terminal. There we go. So now our terminal keyboard shortcuts are all working. That's perfect. Let's see if Windows snapping side by side works. It does indeed. So we've got two way split. Do we have a four way split? We do very nice okay let's minimize that I'm gonna open Steam and let Steam do its update like I said I will be installing this onto the desktop and then playing some games so we can sort of remark on that on the follow-up video right let's let Steam do its update there I'm now going to go into the appearance setting and see what theming it's got out of the box so let's scroll all the way up oh look they are spoiling me they've got arc arc darker and arc dark 
let's go on to arc darker and then let's go into the windows manager windows manager and then let's also set it to arc dark in here perfect and let's get a little background going let's close that oh let's check the icons as well so icon wise oh, it even has arc icons i thought this distribution's just been made for me um, new mix as well is in there papyrus teller uh, teller brown teller brown flat teller dark cool there's a lot in here isn't there right let's change the wallpaper ah okay so your right click has your like accessories and things like that let's go into desktop um, so it defaults to a solid color which is not too bad of an idea let's go into the backgrounds folder right got a nice little selection here let's just have a little quick scroll through um, let's go for that triangle there how's that looking nice I like that okay let's close that steam is just doing its update have we finished our update in the package manager yet checking into conflicts nope so that's still going right I wonder if it's got um, workspaces out of the box virtual desktops let's go on to Windows Manager again Windows Manager and then let's go on to keyboard I will sign into that later well I'll do it on the main computer let's go to move window to upper move window to next workspace move window to left and right so I'm going to have that as control and alt um, is that the left one? Yep. So we're going to do the same for the bottom one now, but with the right. And now we just want move to window left or right. There we go. Left workspace. And then I just have that as a simple control. And same for that one. All right. Let's have a look at our desktops. Mm, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay. Is that working? I'm not getting a switcher. Let me open something and see if that's actually doing anything. No. probably have to add it somewhere let's go on to the settings again let's go on to the settings manager right so what have we got in here we've got about me appearance desktop what's on desktop is that just what we were just on yes oh it might be called workspaces there we go so let's add four workspaces and now let's check how that switches it there we go and then we can move that there 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 perfect I much prefer switches that are left and right as opposed to up and down. Okay, so how is our updates going now? So that's still going. Um, it's updating quite a lot though by the looks of it, so it's going to take a little bit of time. Let's leave that like that. Okay, um, does it have plank? I don't mind the idea of a panel, but I'd probably rather have a plank there. No, so I might install plank. So it comes with wine tricks. Does it come with wine as well? Yeah, I do believe it does. And it comes with Lutra. So it's really just set up ready to go, isn't it? Wow. Very nice. Okay, I'm just going to see if my keyboard shortcuts work on this laptop. Yep, that all works. Let's try the brightness. That works as well. Very nice. Let's switch to a different desktop now and then see what versions of things it's got. So we've got. Oh, I like the way it's done the colours of the um, folders there as well. Do you know what? I'm really liking this. Right, let's go into help and about. So we've got version 1.8.11. Do we have any Office file um, programs? No Libra. Let's go on to Office here. Right, so what I probably will do is also install Libra Office once the update and everything like that is finished. Let's go back into there and see how that's getting on now okay that's still going with that what i think i'm going to do is pause the video and then we'll come back to that once that's done have a final little look around check what the ram is at boot and then we'll wrap it up there okay it's still updating so i'm just going to wrap up the video here but i'm actually quite excited for this one so hopefully it all goes well and then i'll see you in the next episode if you've enjoyed the video please subscribe and i'll see you on the next one Bye bye